Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, got my man, Jeff Greenwald here. We're going to talk about your psychotic tennis today. All right, stay tuned. Guys, what is this, huh? Okay, you guys do this all the time. You see people on TV, pros doing it all the time. What exactly is that? Well, I got my man here. Well-known sports psychologist. Mr. Jeff Greenwall here with me today to explain to you why we are the way we are on the court and what's going on with us. Why are we so angry? What's going on with our emotions? Who in the hell are we on the court? We gonna be able to explain all that, Jeff? We, we hope we'll try, boy. We'll try. Okay. We'll give it up back. <laughs> all right. So, I've had a long history with my man here, Jeff. I used to string his rackets when, man, way back when, over 30 years ago, back in the Lombardi sports days. <laughs> wait, 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 we ain't that old. <laughs> Any, anyways, but I've always known Jeff to be a super top-notch player. Now, I didn't know, though, that he's also a renowned author and wrote the third top tennis book in the world top selling i guess uh third uh in history in, in the history mental training yeah. oh so yeah. so my man here is well read and i guess a bunch of you guys have already read his book but it's about mental toughness Sure, mental yeah. toughness. Yeah. Okay, we'll explain sure. a little bit more about Focus. that. Focus, yeah, yeah, a lot of things actually. There's 50 chapters, so there's a lot of topics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but like, let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on my man Jeff here. So, as a junior, he was top ranked. Went to Bolateri. Couple stints at Bolateri. Um, kind of, maybe lost a little focus, a little edge, right? Went back to Bolteri for that second time. And then, where did you go to school? UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara. Played on the team? Mm -hmm. Okay. How'd we do there? We did pretty darn well there. Okay. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Went on tour? Went on tour. Went on tour for a couple of years, yeah. Okay. And you, I know that you had a number one ranking on the ITF tour. Mm -hmm. So I knew how good you were. And we tried the ATP tour, right? Yeah. What I happened agree. there? I traveled the world, which is great. Mm -hmm. Five continents. And um, and I lived out of the bag, you know, oh, yeah. and uh, had that life. And uh, and then after, you know, 795 in the world, uh, wasn't quite uh, cutting the mustard, you know. Right. wasn't quite doing the trick mm. to pay to to put good food in my mouth and you know pay for kids education so i i um moved on from there mm. so just from talking to coach c jackson before i mean we all we all know that unless you're in the top 50 you ain't making no dough maybe 100 yeah you know but uh it's it gets tricky after the top uh top 50 100 yeah right so for sure what inspired you to do the uh psychology thing I got a taste of what it's actually like to be loose on the court, you know, what it feels like to be loose uh, and free. And I thought, this is interesting. This is different than play junior college pro. Here I'm in Germany playing and I'm playing four days a week and not every day, three, four hours a day. And I thought, this is why do we play well one day, not the next time I went back to school to figure this thing out. So oh. here we are 23 years later. So tell me how you how you came to that conclusion of being free because i know everybody out there don't know anything but tight 
We do. Everybody knows tight. We all know tight. I knew tight for, and I, used, I knew anger like you. I knew anger. I knew tight. I knew, you know, and you don't feel like you're, you're playing the way you know you can. Right. So it's, that's incredibly frustrating. So, right. so going back to the school and figuring this out was, uh, I, I, I realized that, yeah, when the balls are landing deeper and it feels a little better through the ball, mm-hmm. you know, everybody knows when they're feeling, playing tight. I, everybody knows if you're honest, you know, if you held back and you, Kind of if you're honest with yourself. If you protected right. protected the lead or whatever it is you you know. And uh, even if people say, hey, you know, good match. You played well. You know you played tight. It doesn't quite feel the same way, does it? I actually have a question that I've been wanting to ask you specifically for a while. Now, I've seen certain professionals never, never get rid of their tightness. Others, like... I've literally seen Dennis, Dennis Shapovalov, like evolve into a good player in front of my eyes. I've seen him in the lo- the lowest of lows, and then he gets into this moment where it's what I like to call the screw it moment. Like I don't give a crap anymore. I'm just gonna hit the crap out of this ball. If it goes in, it goes in. If it doesn't. Whatever. But I feel like people have to get to this moment b- before they got to like hit rock bottom before they kind of ascend again. Like what's going on there? Too much to lose, right? You, you're nailing it. It's the, the tendency to protect. It's so powerful. And, and the problem is we actually win points that way, don't we? Sometimes. Oh, you play, you roll it back, hope for the best, hope, operative word, but which I don't think belongs, you know, cause we're hoping. For them to miss, which is the mentality that right. ultimately doesn't feel make you feel satisfied. It doesn't actually help you on the scoreboard a whole lot either. But sometimes we do win those points. So next time you're faced with that moment, <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to roll that bot back and hope for the best. And that's an instinct we have. So it's sort of trying to transcend that. And that's the way through, you know, to to figure that out. You talk about getting rid of tension. You got to accept the reality that you're going to get tight sometimes. Right. And it's managing it, right? But there's a tendency to want to get rid of it. You don't want it. But you gotta embrace it. You're gonna lose sometimes, etc. But anyway, the tension is a big deal. Yeah. How do we let's say accelerate that a little more? What little things can we do? Well, there's big and little, right? Big is determining how you wanna play and be. Like, you know, what do you what matters to you over and above winning and losing? Mm-hmm. For me, playing with freedom is actually, I'll be honest, more important even than the win or the loss. Like if you can get to the point where playing freely is actually more important, playing loose, playing aggressive, moving the ball around, if these things are actually valuable to you, even even if it's on par with, hey, I really want to win, I don't want to lose it, but if you can get engaged with the things that actually ironically help you win anyway, it's kind of, it becomes after a while logical to focus on the things you control, right? Right. And then, and then you win more and it's an upward spiral. So you got to be willing to go through the door. And that means, yes, you're going to miss some. You're going to play around with this loose thing and freedom. And you got to do that in practice. But practically, you got to get familiar with what it's like to be loose. You got to know I have a number. I use a dial, you know, one to ten and all that. But if you can get familiar with what it feels like at a six for you and a four, and you know the difference. Yeah. And you can train that. You can bake that in. Federer bakes it in. He's hitting balls that are landing in the sunroof he's just messing around before matches sometimes right you know but there's a level of looseness i believe in freedom that we all want ultimately we think it's through the wins let's win i don't want to lose i want to beat that guy but really if we get engaged with with the feeling of it tennis is feel right we're too much in here that's the bottom line we're way too much in here right basically what you're saying is you know i'm hugging myself so tight because I want to protect myself so much from losing. How do we start letting go? Letting go. What's the phrase you use in your book? Permission to miss. Permission to miss. Okay. I mean, we're going to lose 45% of the points roughly anyway. In a, in, a, in, a, in a typical match, we only need 51%-ish. So why don't we actually play the game based on stats It would make sense to give yourself a little more permission, a little more room to hit through it, get the feel. What's it like to follow through? Oh, wow. I did that in a match. That feels pretty good. Do it again. If you're willing, 
to do it. If you're willing to miss by an inch or two, you know, oh yes, I know you give a free point away, but I'm saying there's an investment there in letting it go. And then you can dial it back, etc. But gotta have permission. So Jeff is giving you permission to swing freely. He's basically giving you permission to lose. Okay? I like like what you and I always talk about, right? You got to learn how to lose in order to learn how to win. Brad has a, he, he says, he has a great quote that says, and you know, if you know Brad, I hate to lose, but I'm not scared to lose. And I think that's a good, you know, you don't want it. You don't, but if you're trying not to lose, right. you're trying to avoid the elephant in the room. All you're going to see is the elephant. Right. So you got to get to a place of what else can I focus on? So at the end of it, if you want practical, focus on things that you actually, that will help you get to where you want to go. Right. And, and so, so it is, you know, the permission, and that doesn't mean reckless, Harry, right? Like to be reckless, you got to find that controlled aggression, right? Kind of like you with a the racket there, <laughs> uh, but, but you got to be able to control that, but it's, it's, it's a level looser and freer certainly than you've been playing and, and, and mirrors maybe practice just a little more that level of freedom. It's a choice. Jeff brings up a great point. Do you play like you practice, right? As soon as we get into a match, let's start a set. Let's, let's play our match. Man, it's like, whoa, we're in like, lock down tight. No, 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 <laughs> not gonna lose. Nope, 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 not gonna lose, right? It's like, let it go. Let it go. How can we play more like how we practice? I think when we people get, feel a little tight, when they feel a little nervous, they panic. So it's the worry of the worry. It's the worry about being tight. It's the worry about missing because you feel nervous or tight. But if you just say, you know what? Okay, I'm tight. Okay, and then give yourself permission again to accelerate, not decelerate. Because I think we stay in a downward spiral in that place of fearing the loss and fearing the tension. And who's in the driver's seat? We're not there anymore. Right. We're in the trunk. And fear is driving the car. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And I think, again, like people get spooked, you know, if you get spooked because of your tension or because you had a bad thought and, oh, I'm going to lose today. And, you you know, you let that thought, you know, uh, spiral, then like a brush fire turns into a forest fire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have to learn to manage yourself. Right. And I think about us as an instrument, like you got to be able to tune your body, got to tune your mind when it goes off and you lose focus. You have to tune this. You got to believe you've got, you can adjust if things go bad. You've got to find a way. You got to know you have some tools to make the adjustment, the right adjustment too. I'm sure since you've been at the highest ranking um, of the ITFs, when you walk out on a tennis court to play, like let's say a finals, mm -hmm. um, do you walk out, well, A, right, arrogantly, confidently with a little bit of nerves then is that what you're telling me uh, not arrogantly ever <laughs> ever i call it arrogantly it because it looks like it you want to you need to act and walk like you uh, are in command of yourself and your environment mm -hmm. and you walk mm -hmm. to your bench and you pull the racket out and you go back and you serve and you walk through between points like you know where you're going mm -hmm. and what you're doing what you're asking is sort of uh I, I walk on the court as if I believe I can win yes. and I believe I can, but, um, but you don't know. And you're, you have to lock in on the things that you, uh, you know, you need to do to, to get the W that you want without getting obsessed with that or fearing it go not going your way. Because at the end of the day, it's executing what you have control over. And that's the best you can do that day. Right. You know? Wow, that's a that's a very neutral answer, Jeff. I was expecting kind of like a, yeah, I'm gonna go out and just do what needs to be done, and, and get it done. Some players, I think everyone's a little maybe a right. little different in that regard. Like you, if you need that extra dose, right? Like I like to play um, in a state that's that's free and not um, constrained, okay. right? Like I'm sure everybody does. For me, that's more about engaging in you know, prioritizing being loose, prioritizing moving the ball around, uh, stepping up on returns and moving forward, you know, hitting my four and using my strength. Like I'm prioritizing those things. So 
the, I'm going to win this. I'm going to, you know, like that, that to me is just a waste of energy. Right. Well, there was one match I played. I was in the finals, um, uh, of the national hard courts in 2017. And, um, and I lost the first set and I was doubting I could win that. So I literally visualized the trophy and the speech after for like five seconds. Oh. So this goes totally <laughs> against the process, but I needed the dose of confidence to believe in that moment. So I, I don't, I rarely dip into the external, the, you know, but I needed like, I wanted to make it real and it worked. It, 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 it gave me that extra belief in that moment. That's sort of a, just one example of adjusting in a moment that, um, you know, was unique and I had to be aware of what I needed Got it. and I needed an extra kick. Like, you know what? You can do this. Got it. Okay. As we talked about tennis is a game of mistakes. You lose as many points as you win. Plus, you're all by yourself out there. You're on an island. What advice would you give our tennis audience out there? When you're out on the island, and so the number one thing, trap, is is getting stuck in your head. You know that, right? It's thinking about technique, which is probably the worst thing you can do, especially like Rolodexing through different technical adjustments. And so, this is, you know, it's it, a lot of people say, well, should you not think about technique at all? No, you can have a, a swing thought, a cue, something meaningful. I go into matches with two intentions, being loose and aggressive and maybe breathing between points. I change that around a little bit, but you have your main adjustment or or your intentions that you can come back to right. when you miss your forehand twice in a row. But do you need to adjust every forehand you miss and every back and you're going to lose 45% of the points? How many mistakes are you going to make? Right. So to uh, micromanage yourself like crazy, that's where we get into the you and the demon, you and your inner demon, right? We got to kind of calm the waters a little bit, right? Invest in the, the intentions and, and stick with it a little bit. And if you're playing well and losing, you're feeling pretty free and you're down, you got, mm -hmm. you know, you, you need to be tactical too. And that can actually take the pressure off you if you put your attention over on, Hey, I want to play this guy's backhand. Cause when we get tight, we tend to get self conscious. So that's another point too. We get caught up in ourselves right. back right. to the overthinking. So right. get your attention back on the ball, back on your opponent, you know, in terms of where you want to hit the ball. Yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah. great advice, guys. You know, got to listen to that one. <laughs> How can us as tennis players get the most out of ourselves each and every time? Like, what is like the little things, the little things? I think that we need to get tune up the instrument. If you can get be better at, at, at being aware of when you feel good. So if you hit a good ball, con good contact, feels good, feels loose, freeze the moment. Like, freeze it. Physically, mm -hmm. not, oh, that was a great shot. Ego, we didn't talk, we haven't talked about ego a lot, but <laughs> ego can come in and, oh, wow, I'm great, you know, but like tune into the moment. Wow, that ball, that felt nice so you can replicate it. So there's, I think awareness is a problem when we're in our head and we're analyzing and beating ourselves up because we're not playing as well as we expected or we should be beating that player, all the should, six letter swear word in my book, right. but right. like, just if we can get away from some of that stuff, that noise and actually focus in on the ball and the, you know, how loose are you feeling and how that, do you follow through? Do you feel that? Right. You know, and so there's, I think that's really valuable and you can set those intentions before you practice. So that day, like, okay, today I'm going to really work on that loose feeling. I'm going to really work on the follow through, maybe accelerating. I, I think a lot of times we just go out and play and then we start judging the hell out of ourselves right you know right too much way too much now indian wells just ended now time and time again i've watched all these matches where the person wins the first set you know sometimes pretty handily six one they go up like five one five two in the second set and literally lose their mind they get like this and like, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. What the heck is going on with them, Jeff? Wheels came off. It's like soon as, so it happens to the best of us that negative thought can come in. Oh, one more game mm -hmm. or one more set, mm -hmm. one more set. And I got this, but we're so caught up in ourselves often. We're like, and, and then we play, a you know, maybe a bad point or two. And so now it's like, oh no, the panic on top of the, oh, it's yeah. like, no, 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 it's okay. 
you're not, now you're, so, so calm down, turn back, reset, back to like being on your own island. There's this inner panic, right? And, and yeah. you think, you think, cause your brain is hijacked that you're, yep. that, that you're being eaten by the dinosaur. Right. You know? Right. And, and what you need to do is you need to coach your own brain. So you gotta be like, down boy, it's okay. Because if you don't do that, you're in the trunk tied up and fear is driving the car. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. I want to win. I'm so close now. One more set, one more game. And then, we we just lose our way. Let's get the car back on the on the road. And sometimes you never get it back on the road. By the time you get it on the road, you're in the locker room with a with an L. Yeah. Right. So I was last last was it two years ago? We had in in La Jolla. I was in the semis against Francisco Clavet, who was 17 in the world, beat Federer, Hewitt, Agassi twice. So I'm playing him on the front court where I've won the tournaments before nationals and worlds once, and um he was up 2-0. 40 love, I think. I hadn't won a point. I hadn't won a point. And I had a thought in my head and said, Jeff, you're going to get bageled 6-0. I saw the scoreboard in my mind. Like, you could get bageled <laughs> right here on this court. And I I, I kind of smiled at the thought. And I said, Jeff, focus on your forehand. Use your forehand. And I won 7-6. Oh. You know? Okay. So I got him 7-6. He got me, you know, in three. But it's like, okay, we can have a bad thought. We can have a little tight tightness. And let's go from there. So what would... What... What I'm guessing you're saying is loosen up out there a little bit, right? Have a little fun, right? I mean, we just got out of COVID. Like, hey, let's give ourselves permission to have fun too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Play. It's a game. It's a game, guys. What we're doing here is how do we, you know, take out the the noise, you know, you know, sort of sift this out a bit so you can actually play and be grateful and appreciate the moment and be present and all this stuff and not just about... You beat that one player and you get the trophy, et cetera. Right, right. All right, guys. So we talked a lot about losing is the key to winning. Now, my man Jeff's son, along with Jeff's help, helped write a book called Losing is the Key to Winning. Jeff, talk to me about this book. Well, we have a very competitive young man here who didn't like to lose, didn't like the feeling. Um, but he learned over time that we're all going to lose Federer. And he in the first chapter, he talks about how many times Federer's lost over a couple hundred times. So that impressed him. He loves Federer. Who doesn't love Federer? Exactly. And he was impressed, you know, and it, and it really sort of reached him that, you know, that we're all going to lose. But if we can, as we've been talking about, focus on the things that are going to actually get you the win, which is in here and, and, uh, you know, so it's a very cool thing that he, he started to reflect on, uh, with something that's really hard for a lot of players to understand or to absorb is that we're, we're, we're going to lose and, and accepting that. And that can help you actually free up. And that's what's, what's in here. That's exactly what we've been yeah. talking about this whole segment, guys. So like father, like son. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. Been a Thank pleasure. You. Oh Harry. man, I love this. Love we could talk for hours. <laughs> we'll Jesus. be back. Let's do it again. Okay. If that you guys have great. comments, leave them. Chat. You know, let, let's hear what you uh, what you think, and I'd love to hear. I'm happy to answer any questions too. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So, if you want to contact Jeff, um, I'm going to leave a link below. Um, what is your website, and how can they contact you? FearlessTennis.com. FearlessTennis.com. This is the book, guys. So the best tennis of your life you can get this on <laughs> yep, amazon absolutely. guys yep. okay yeah. best tennis of your life thank you jeff greenwald for hanging out with me today man i again i can talk for hours my man is a a whiz <laughs> at at the mind thank you for watching Thanks, guys tennis spin where we put our spin on your tennis